trophy game of the week, boys. Ohio State minus three and a half favored at Penn State. Going to be a crazy environment. Going to be a wild environment. Butthole environment, yes, sir. I'm assuming Whoa. you're... Yeah, it was the butthole. Butthole? Penn State. You don't like Penn State? Oh, yeah. a joke. Like you got to navigate that Sandusky butthole. Yeah. Just, <laughs> okay. Just for the people all right. who know I Yep. No, kid, show. <laughs> kid show. Kid show. Right. Kid show. Hey, we can, we, sometimes we just throw stuff at the wall. No, don't say happens. kid show because. This is a kid show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's got him coming. He's We're doubling down. Right. We're doubling down. He's here down. all show, boys. Like He's here all show. I like it. Well, Delaney Walker, this is your favorite segment, college football. Who you got, Ohio State or Penn State? I'm going Penn State. Okay, why I'm that? taking Penn State because Tyler Warren, tight end, baby. Right now, he got 47 receptions, 559 yards, and four TDs. My man is out there eating. And I know we missed National Tight End Day, but I got to go with him. He's doing his thing. He's going to have a get game against those boys, Ohio State. But you got other guys like Nicholas Singletary, Harrison Wallace. Wallace, I think his last name is Wallace. Those boys are going to get the job done. What are they, 7-0? Yeah, they're undefeated. Yeah, they're undefeated. It's a, let's do it. It's a big matchup. It's like three versus four. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> this this one's a big deal. Like this so, is a big deal. This is that's why I'm taking Penn State. Even though I made those jokes about you guys, I'll still rock with y'all. Yeah. Let's get it cracked. Just jokes. I think Just this jokes. is a hot seat game for both coaches. Really? Ooh. I do. It's a fun Ryan, take. Ryan, it's a fun Ryan, take. Ryan Day losing in, losing to Oregon, obviously having a tough physical game against mm. my Nebraska Cornhuskers. I feel like if they <laughs> lose this game to Penn State, bro, I mean, he's uh, three straight losses to top five teams. And also, James Franklin on the other side is 1-12 against top five opponents. Yes. I feel like both yeah. of them are kind of flirting with the hot seat because I feel like Penn State plays great all season until they see – Red on the other side in Ohio State or, or blue on the other side in Michigan. So I feel like this is a massive game for both head coaches. I like Penn State because I feel like they're better in the trenches. Ohio State's going to have to figure out how to run the football consistently, consistently, which they've struggled to do. And I just feel like Penn State, like they're just a more physical outfit. I like uh, and Penn State at home, <coughs> like that environment we saw Ohio State. We were at the Oregon game, Oregon at Ohio State. They had like, yeah, they had like nine penalties. They're putting the ball on the ground. They didn't deal with that environment very well. In Penn State, you got a you got a whiteout going. On. It's, it's a whiteout. It's gonna be a right? whiteout. I think it's a whiteout. No, out. not a whiteout. It's a noon game. Noon game. A noon game. Scrap the whiteout comment. Scrap yeah. the whiteout. Scrap either way, redacted. either way, that's gonna be a rowdy environment. I I just I like Penn State. So I don't like either of these teams. Huh? Penn State starting quarterback. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. I, I had him down, but I heard he was questionable, so I didn't even bring his. Name I don't like either of these teams. I love Penn State's environment. And for all the reasons you said about James Franklin and the way he's handled top five teams, to be one and twelve. One and twelve. This is a that this is, is a big game. I think when he sees the Scarlet and Gray, and I never want to vote for Ohio State. I never want Ohio State to win. I think Ohio State pulls this one out and they cover. I do. I think yeah. it's a crazy You don't think they have a hangover from, you know, Nebraska? <laughs> you know what? As crazy it may seem, no. <laughs> I don't think they do. They just They've had a tough couple of weeks. You obviously lose to Oregon. You have the bye week, and then you come out, and the line is 25 and a half points against the That's Nebraska. That's what I'm saying. You had a bye week, down bro. down the wire at home. Now, there could be a lot of things in the culture. I know they paid for a lot of their players as opposed to just instilling culture yeah. in their team like good teams do like the University of Michigan. But <laughs> I just, when it comes to James Franklin, him getting the yips, dude, he gets a little yippy when he sees Scarlet and Gray or Maze and Blue on the other side of him. Dog... I just see Ohio State putting this one away. I wasn't aware of the quarterback being questionable. That makes me more confident than ever that. But they, but you Ohio still State's Penn State secondary is cold. I Who? Mean, Penn State. They got one of. They the got that best. freshman wide receiver at Ohio State, dude. That and is just get after, the, they get after the quarterback. Yeah. They can stop the run. They run. They got a two headed monster in the backfield. Now, yeah, yeah the two headed monster backfield. Somebody yesterday was that you, Coop? Did he come from Oklahoma State? Who was the running back? Somebody was somebody. From where? From Ole Miss. Ole Miss. 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 Somebody. Yeah, Quinshot. I was I I was told by one of the boys in the back, tough (laughs) locker room guy, tough locker room guy, not the guy you want, essentially being in the locker room and keeping the glue together when things are being a nucleus in the run game. Oh, you're talking about he's a cancer. Allegedly. Okay. That's the but you know me and my takes, dude. I, I've had like 17 takes throughout my gambling career. All of them have been wrong. <laughs> so I could he could be the best guy ever. Yeah. He'll be the best guy of all time. Yeah, yeah. So who knows? But there's another take. Cancer. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Tier talk. Who wants to start off the tier talk? Go ahead, Will. All right. My tier one is going to be Georgia. Right now they are favored by 16 and a half. I think they cover. 
It's at Georgia. I think Georgia's going to catch their stride. I know they've been a little inconsistent, but again, you look at Kirby Smart, he's 51-0 and versus teams outside of Alabama. And Trevor Etienne transferred from Florida. And I'm marrying this to my pick a couple weeks ago when I bet against Saquon Barkley when he played against the Giants. I feel like this is a big game for Trevor Etienne. He wants to run all over them, which again, they struggled to have a consistent running game. But I feel like as touted as he is coming from Florida, he's going to want to get this game. And I like... Uh, I like Georgia minus 16 and a half to cover with Florida at home at Georgia. My tier two is going to be Indiana versus Michigan State. I feel like when you look at Michigan State, they had a surprising win against Iowa. But other than that, they've gotten choked out by Ohio State. They've gotten choked out by Oregon. I think Signetti has those boys playing well. And if you look back, even in the gambling data, since 2022, Signetti is 8-2 as an away favorite. And they've been 7-0 against the spread since week one. I think Signetti has those boys motivated, inspired. They're having fun. And I think they cover against Michigan State. That's my tier two. My tier three is going to be Arkansas plus seven. Arkansas. Against, yeah, against Ole Miss. I feel like Arkansas is kind of, they're kind of frisky. And they're playing at Arkansas. I feel like it's an environment you don't necessarily want to be at. Dual threat quarterback. Yeah. Ole Miss can win this game, but I like the points with Arkansas there. And that is my tier talk. I was excited to get into my ballsy pick because I think JP's going to love it. I'll go next. It's my tier talk. <laughs> Uh, before we go anywhere, I agree with all those picks. I love for the reason of the group chat yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had these, I had these picks <laughs> yeah. turned in, and Taylor had all of my tear talk the exact same. The like exact same. That, brother, you got and I didn't even game. look at you Will's picks. I was like, bro. Yeah. I had notes on. I was like, this. I think this is the best tear talk I've ever had. And then Will's like, you literally have every single one of mine. <laughs> yeah. Had to go back to the drawing board in a big way. Go ahead, Delaney. Uh, so my tier one is going to be Duke versus Miami, Florida. I'm taking Hurricanes. Y'all already know what time it is. Cam- take that one as well. Y'all already know what time it is. Cam Ward has just been going nuts. <laughs> My man is out there holding shit down. Even scored a touchdown. They great protection. They threw the man a pass. Yeah, great protection. O-line is awesome. Oh, Everyone boy. else, defense is good. But they threw this man a pass. Can he catch? Can he throw? Can he do it? He can do it all, you know? So, Booby at the Miles. end of the day, <clears throat> Booby, Booby Miles. Miles. If you want to win, let Booby spin. Yeah. Tier 2. Texas Tech versus Iowa State. Try to hit that as well. Yeah, he did. I did. Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, with that, uh, let me see. They, I was, what, 7-0, 4-0 in conference going against Texas Tech. I'm just taking Iowa State just because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you need Sherm. Sherm's a Texas Tech Raider. Take Iowa State. Yeah, come up here. Right. Come to the come to the fire bar. Hey, you got to Come to the re- fire bar, Sherm. Record. Sherm, sell us on Iowa State against your Texas Tech Raiders. It's not so much Iowa State. I would say <laughs> it's more of how Texas Tech has been playing. Everybody's calling for the offensive coordinator's head. The play calling, it, the, a lot of screen passes. The screen passes are not working. Why well, you got to look at me when you say that? You, because, screen, you, love the screen. Well, you have to throw screens against that Ohio State D-line. That just is what it is. I know he's referring to Nebraska throwing screen plays. <laughs> just a lot of screen passes. You do have uh, Taj Brooks, the running back for Texas Tech. Uh, very talented Baron Morton at quarterback, uh, he's kind of on and off. They brought in a uh, redshirt freshman to come in and kind of dial in uh, against who they were playing last week. I'm just not crazy about Tech. They've been struggling. Iowa State looks consistent as it at Iowa State. It is Iowa State. Yeah. I mean, going up to uh, Ames. Ames. It's yeah. going to be cold. I don't think the Red Raiders are ready. Yeah. I think Iowa State. And I think Iowa State big. What was the line? It was uh... – 11. It's 13 and 13. a half. Yeah, I would take that. Yeah. I would take that. Yeah. Thank you, Sherm. You're Thank you, mate. Thank you, Sherm. Yeah, Sherm. And then nice my... work. I, will, I do want to point out Sherm's 0 and 1 on this show. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Walked yeah, yeah, walked yeah, into a bad yeah. pick. Yeah, walked into a bad pick. But Iowa State right now is looking good. They're on fire. I don't think they're going to fall to the Texas Tech. That's mm. just my opinion. Okay. My tier three, Vanderbilt versus Auburn. You Try know. to take that one, too. So you know, guys. Got to go with the hometown kids, man. They played tough against Texas. They did. They played a very good game. And you got you got to thank the new coordinator. You got uh, Tim Beck and Jerry Kill. They were putting shit together to make these dudes exciting. Being able to move the ball, being able to run the ball, getting those guys going. So I got to I got to take Vanderbilt to cover against Auburn. I know that's 
that's a good tough one, but I think those boys is gonna hold it down. They're gonna bounce back for that loss to to Texas. Diego Pavia, a psychopath, had a little knee injury in that Texas game. Yeah, but he's a psychopath. A minute, but he's a psychopath. He's gonna be. He's back. gonna go to the wheels fall off. Yes, indeed. He ain't never tapping his helmet. No, no, he's he never tapping his helmet. Tapping no. his Colts would love a guy like that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would love a, a psychopath like that. like that right now. And you can get him in a lower pick. You know. I, yeah, or free agency, whatever. Um, Damn. I, listen, Diego Pavia. Is, I mean, Diego Pavia is a his best ball right now. Yeah, his yeah, best yeah, ball is yeah, right yeah. now. He's oh, a college yeah. football quarterback all the way. Oh yeah, all, all the way. Like the guy doesn't throw the ball down the field. Very nifty on the triple option type of looks they have. Mm-hmm. They do a great job with the options. Fullbacks under center, guys <coughs> sweeping over the cross. They do. They're very creative. Very creative from a from an offensive scheme. Yeah. Um, all the picks you've just heard, I also tried to take. In multiple different phases. <laughs> when I tried to do my tier talk, I, I truly was grasping at straws at the end. My tier one, though, is going to go to the Tennessee Volunteers. They are favored at minus 16 and a half. They're playing versus Kentucky. Kentucky can be sneaky. They cannot be sneaky. However, the boys in orange are going to handle business on that day. They have boys black. in black. Oh, that's they got right. The black unis. Bro. And by the way, shout out Tennessee Volunteers edit game. You see yeah, that? Yeah, that edit no. was Where they sick. had like a Venom type of the thing Venom. where it crawled up on the orange and it just like turned this dude into all, all black uniforms. And then when he came up. It might be the hardest edit in college nah, football it was right sick. now. Because the yeah. Venom movie coming out, so they just took that and ran. Yeah, with that, shout I'm out more confident than ever now. Like Tennessee is oh, more hard. than 21 yeah. points. More than 20 points with, yeah. with those uniforms on. Yeah, U- uniforms get sick. you points. My next game, I'm taking Illinois. Plus three versus Minnesota. I know I love Minnesota. I love the little gopher. I think that's tough. I think either Minnesota's been playing some listen, decent ball. They've been hey, playing I decent like ball. I like Luke like Altmaier. I think Luke Altmaier, like the quarterback's bank. been doing a great job. They get a little banged up versus Oregon. Like they get it. they they get stuffed a little bit by Oregon. That's not a fun time for them. This is a bounce back type of team. Brett Bielema, the head coach there, he came from Wisconsin a while back when you and I were both there. You remember Brett Bielema, right? Uh, 2012. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you remember him. Has a hard nosed ball club. He instills hard nosed culture. He had a couple of guys get banged up and bruised up last week against Oregon. He is getting these boys right. I like them plus three right now. I really do. And the thing that Steve keeps ringing in my head for Minnesota is their week one game. They go to kick a field goal, they miss a field goal, and they end up shooting off the fireworks in their yes. own stadium as if they won. <laughs> that still rings in my head. No idea why, but Fire that's a big him. reason. <clears throat> my last pick, and it's because. The Valley has a, has been activated, even though they dropped one last week. I'm going to take ASU minus three versus the Cowboys. Both teams lost last week. Both teams didn't cover last week. Oklahoma State loses by 10 against Baylor. I love Dillingham. I was in Arizona a couple of weeks ago. Was able to go. I, I was driving by my old high school. See the lights on. It was a Thursday night. I was like, let me go check out this JV game for a minute. Go check out the JV game. Worst ball I've ever seen in my life, but the boys were having a good time, and that's what matters the most. <laughs> a couple of guys were there, a couple of individuals that were from the 99 Chaparral High School football team. They went like 53-0. and They never lost a football game in high school. And the older brother of Kenny Dillingham was there, and all the boys were talking about how Dillingham and ASU is really getting going. A, fan, a fair weather fan state now is starting to roll towards the tide of ASU having a little bit more success, even though they drop one. I see these boys making a big comeback against the Cowboys, and that is my tier dog. I love that. Easy tier three pick here. Uh, Nebraska minus six and a half hosting UCLA this weekend. Just FYI, that's a good pick as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Against, I didn't want to touch against UCLA? Yeah, against UCLA. Yeah, they should beat them. I hope so. Yeah. Wait, wait who Michigan got? I'm shocked you didn't pick Michigan. Uh, they played in Oregon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have that. I would have probably added that to my tier talk. Yeah. Yeah, they got, uh, they're playing. The line sixteen. You don't like them plus sixteen. I think they're at a better chance to have. This is a good. This is a good point in the season to figure out where Michigan's at. I think when you go to Texas. Yeah. You had uh, Warren Davis in there. He's now back in, but throughout the process of the season, season dropping a couple of games, you really find out who you are. Wink Martindale has done a good job of dialing back the blitzes a little much, letting his athletes play athletes. His two studs in the middle and wreak havoc in the middle of the pocket. Warren Davis, although he was playing a fraudulent, not a fraudulent, just a bad football team in Michigan State last week, able to push it out, push the ball downfield, get Colston Loveland a couple of touchdowns. The boys looked good last week. They started to take steps in the right direction. However, Oregon's a good ball club. I texted Dan Lanning. I texted him. I said, hey, you guys got a great ball club out there. You've been doing some good stuff. It's unfortunate you have to run into a one-dimensional football team like Michigan. That buzzsaw that's going to take you guys down. He ha ha my text. <laughs> <laughs> so for that reason, I'll be staying away from this game. Yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you have a head coach of a, a number one football team, ha ha your text? 
Yeah. Makes you a little uncomfortable. Indeed. Makes you shake a little bit. Like Sherman should have made you shake when he jumped up on you when the segment started. But that's why I'm staying away from Michigan. I mean, I'm unbothered by that. Fans might be leaving at halftime. I, they, Damn. They, you know, the fans had a bad show. Say, we were, we were, yeah, we were at Texas. They left that. They were leaving at halftime. They were leaving at halftime. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Well, we were in the third quarter. We were in the third because we stayed for the third, right? We ha- we knew we had to leave yeah, to we make were the leaving in the third They quarter. still got paid. It don't really matter. Shit, fuck it. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said they still got paid. I, I, I don't, you know, I'm talking about the, the stadium. You you still pay them the, the price to go in there. I don't care if you leave at half. And hey, shout out to Michigan. They're selling the booze pro- now in the, the stadium. The but all the selling booze now in the stadium. They're not going into some hostile environment. At all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure your school had a the very hostile. Really hostile. Anytime yeah. you were up in there, mules running around. Actual cowboy. mules? Yeah. Uh, actual mule. Just a bunch of skinny white guys. Uh, Camouflage uh, yeah. hats and big lips. Yeah, and... I mean, you know, it's Missouri. It's not a lot of yeah. skinny people. <laughs> He's right. That's true. Fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I, I like to see the stats on that. Well, how fat of a state it is compared to the rest of them. Just it's, walk in. It's just not walk. Louisiana's got to be up there too. Look, Alabama, Mississippi, I'm sure Mississippi. Mississippi. Really, that southeast area, huh? Yeah, yeah. We got some obesity diabetes going yeah. on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that type three diabetes going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that Olympics uh, selling out. You want to hit the you want to hit the fireball? Oh the yeah, end of the ballsy pick. Let's see what we ballsy got picks here. this week. Ballsy pick of the week. That's the pro segment. Hold on. Yep, here it is. <clears throat> so many things make football great, but you know what make, what the best thing is? Kicking the living shit out of your rivals. There's absolutely no better feeling as an athlete or a fan. And this week we got Penn State versus Ohio State. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And Fireball Whiskey is here to give you the spark to ignite that rivalry all season long. Grab a football buddy, buy a round, and reignite that rivalry Flame. Delaney, go take it this week. Take it this week. Yes, yes, yes. I was just about to mate. I was a. Uh, there it is. It's a good time of year to have it, too. Some dude, dude talking about being from the hood. Now he's passing off the cap. I, you know, I got, man, my hand been jacked up ever since playing football. This one don't work. Good hand. <laughs> good hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, grab my strong hand. hand. You want to kick it off? Yeah, I'll kick it off. I'm taking this week. I'm going to take Washington money line versus USC. Both teams have now entered the Big Ten Conference. There's something crazy about the Northwest region of the United States and how outdoorsy. We got interesting hair. We got interesting lifestyles. However, when it comes to football, they are so loud. They are so invasive in the opponent's space that it makes it very difficult. You saw it a few weeks ago with Michigan and Washington. They had a hard time. A lot of false starts, a lot of things happening. You see in the NFL with Seattle, their 12th man. They got the aluminum going. They got the stadium bringing all that sound down to the middle. USC, after their big win versus LSU, has become a little bit more fraudulent. They're taking these beating from the Big Ten. They're figuring out what Big Ten football is all about, and they're figuring out right now that we're not tough enough to handle this type of situation. I'm going to take Washington money line. Only a, a plus 114. But I like Washington. This is a game. They got a good. They got a good quarterback who's been dishing the ball all season long. I like that. I like that. Let me take you to a night game in South Carolina. Texas A and M massive win last week against LSU. They have their. They seems like they have their quarterback in Marcel Reed. He is going to be tough to defend. Both sides have a great defensive line that can get after the pass rusher. But let's not forget South Carolina. They are coming off of a bye week. They're positioned. Even though they've dropped, they dropped a close game that they should have won against LSU. They lost another one that they should have won against Alabama. Two heartbreaking losses. Heartbreaking. But coming off of a bye, the question is going to be, can they block for sellers and fend off that defensive line by NM? But if they can do that, the MVP of this game is going to be williams Bryce Stadium because it gets rocking. You guys know, JP knows. It's going to be a nasty environment. It's going to be a fun environment. I like USC here. Again, they're sitting... You know, bottom half of the conference, the SEC is tough. Uh, A&M is number one in the conference right now. But if they can take care of business this weekend, the rest of their schedule, I think they got they got Mizzou, they got Vanderbilt, they're going to have Clemson. That'll be a tough game as well. But they would be positioned well to be a three-loss team. They won't get in the SEC championship game, but they could be a team that could. They need a lot of things to work out for them, but they might sneak in the college football playoff. <laughs> give me Beamer, give me USC this weekend. JP. Add to it, brother. We are the team that every team in college football does not want to see on their schedule. Because of the games you're talking about, LSU, Alabama, we flopped one game. What I love about playing Texas A&M, 
they have not dominated but one team for four quarters, and that was Missouri. We all know how Missouri goes. Other than that, <laughs> listen to this. Six-point win versus Bowling Green. Talk to them. Four-point win versus Arkansas. Ten-point win versus Mississippi State. And they were down to LSU 17-7 to at half. And obviously they lost to Notre Dame. They can't play four quarter full four-quarter football. And when you come into williams Bryce at night, you have to be ready to play four-quarter football. This game, it feels a lot like when we played. We had our first coming out party versus Georgia back in 2012. And it was like we won 11 games a year before. Dig it in the archives. Is South Carolina for real? <laughs> first play, A. Sanders. Kickoff return touchdown. Changed the history of South Carolina forever. And this is what I hope Shane Beamer tells the team. Because I saw this on TikTok. And then I mashed <laughs> these two things together. He's going to say, team, we don't have a prayer today. But I do have a message to God. Heavenly Father, it is time to bear witness to the strength of your creation. Because after this battle, the heavens may not accept us. Hell won't be able to contain us. But one thing is certain. History will remember us. Stewie, unload the clip. Ooh. <laughs> Carolina money line. Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, that was tough. Boy, JP. You should have went last, cause goddamn, I can't. I don't know how to follow that. Um, it just throws your money, throws your ballsy pick. I am. <laughs> Serve it up, Illinois money line. All right. You already spoke on it, so I ain't gonna say too much on it. But I'm taking Illinois. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm taking yeah. Illinois money line. I feel like I love how we say Illinois. This. I love it. Hood way, Illinois. <laughs> Hell yeah. If you ain't know, you grew up in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't grow up in the hood, actually. I actually grew up in the suburbs, but I play that persona. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Same. Uh, same. Yeah. Yeah. We I all did. The same vibe. So we all just get tattoos, you know. So <laughs> look tough. Illinois. Oh, yeah. Illinois. 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 Ill